Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy, Gardner. Uh, I'm here today with um, Elementary OS 6. Uh, this is going to be a, a bit of a first impressions video. Uh, these seem to, you guys seem to like my first impressions of uh, operating systems. And uh, so let's just jump into uh, Elementary OS 6 because this this is a this is a big release for them, and I'm really excited to check it out. Uh, full disclosure: I am friends with Cassidy and Daniel. Uh, that they, they're some cool dudes. So, all right, here we go. We're gonna boot into the installer, and we're gonna install it in a virtual machine here. Uh, I am very excited to try this out. I don't know a whole lot about it, um, so I have I have the uh, like release notes on my other screen here. All right, so far off to a good start, although doesn't seem to be doing much here. Yeah, does not seem to be doing anything. <laughs> Why yeah, force quit? Yeah, see? Let's try that again. All right, we're checking the disk integrity right here. And we're booting up. There we go. That's what I want to see. All right, so let's make this full screen. Okay, we're just glitching. Is that cool? All right, we're, we're just glitching. I don't know what that's about. All right, we're gonna pick in, uh, United States here. We're gonna pick United States again. We're gonna click next. Let's just erase disk and install that bad boy. Uh, don't encrypt, I don't want encryption. I don't understand why these this black bar is here and that's, it's probably just virtual box being virtual box. Not a big fan of virtual box, but uh, I've had more luck with uh, with VirtualBox than I have with KVM. Something about KVM and Manjaro just doesn't jive, it seems. All right, it's time to reboot here. Uh, let, let's restart this device. So this is one of the things that's really interesting about uh, elementary OS now. Um, every install is an OEM install. Um, so what that means basically is uh, OEMs, you know, typically will install the operating system uh, and then they'll ship it to you. And then your your first boot experience, your out of box experience uh, basically lets you um, um, like you configure your uh, networking and your, you know, uh, your user accounts and, and your password and all that stuff. Um, so that's what elementary is doing here. Um, unlike other Linux distros that do you know, the, the configuration uh, of your the primary user account and your networking and the updates and stuff like that, uh, when you're doing the installing, elementary just says installer is for installing and then your first boot uh, is for uh, configuring the rest of that stuff. And I actually kind of think that's interesting. It's a, it's a different approach to what other distros do. Um, and I actually, I, I kind of like it. It's pretty nice. Oh, here's an interesting thing. Uh, so I, I'm I'm on record as as uh, uh, despising dark modes for the most part, and, and not in like you know uh, the the eye health kind of way. I actually do prefer a lot of apps to be in quote unquote dark mode um, for you know my own like ocular health, right? But I think that dark modes are uglier on average and harder to pull off. Uh, and are less clear when it comes to actually reading, uh, you know, parsing out inf important information, distinguishing between uh, a normal font weight and a bold font weight. You know, subtlety is a lot harder with a dark, uh, dark mode. But uh, I am friends with uh, the guys at elementary and uh, I have faith in their ability to do this. So I'm going to enable dark mode here. Additionally, there's accent colors now. Um, you can select any of these accent colors. It changes the color of buttons and switches and text selection. And you can also p have it pick an automatic accent color from the background of your wallpaper. And the interesting thing about this is that uh, if you enable dark mode in elementary OS, it actually doesn't force applications to uh, to have a dark mode. Um, if the app hasn't been designed with a dark mode, it's just going to go with its default light mode theme. Um, that's a good thing, in my opinion, because dark modes are hard to do. And I think that it's impossible to do uh, globally if the application isn't it, it's, uh, expecting to have a dark mode forced on it. I like that Elementary considered that fact 
uh, and cares about the app's brand integrity and not forcing a global dark mode on apps that don't have it and, you know, don't have it, hasn't been completed by the developers of the app. That's a good thing. Uh, so if you if you have a problem with the apps not having a dark mode, take that up with the developers of the app, not with elementary. <laughs> so one of the really nice things about uh, elementary OS is that while it is based upon Ubuntu, um, all of the applications that come from their app center uh, are actually flat packs. That has a lot of really interesting implications. Uh, the first and uh, most important of which being uh, apps need to actually request and be granted uh, permission to access different aspects of the system. Uh, so like, for example, uh, like on Android or iOS, when an app wants to access your photo library or wants to access the microphone, it has to ask for permission before uh, it's able to get that permission. That's called sandboxing. And here, Elementary has implemented it um, in a novel way. Uh, now, this isn't an entirely uh, novel solution from Elementary. They didn't come up with flat packs, but I really like the way they're handling permissions, like the presentation of permissions. If you look at the uh, GNOME settings manager, in fact, let me bring that up real fast. If you look at these settings here for each application, um, it kind of like just throws them all into one thing, uh, into just one menu. Uh, so you click on the app and, you know, it shows this column over here of just the different uh, types of things. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I, I like that, you know, I mean, notifications make sense to be here, but like other applications, like other flat packs ha have other permissions that they can be granted. And, uh, so the idea of having your, uh, permissions being a separate thing from like the other things going on in GNOME, um, I, I like the way elementary does it better. I'm just going to say that <laughs> now. The tasks app. This is this is a new thing here to uh, Elementary OS. This, this, this is the debut version here. Now, personally, I would have added a little bit more padding in this list, but that's just me, you know, trying to accommodate touch, because <laughs> uh, I'm one of them newfangled uh, touch developers. But but tasks is pretty cool. Tasks allow you to connect to a CalDAV server, uh, and so you can synchronize your uh, your local tasks with your remote server. And that's really nice because CalDev is, uh, a, a common standard. Uh, you know, you, if you get the right app, you can use, uh, CalDev in Nextcloud. Uh, so you can connect your Nextcloud, your self hosted cloud, uh, to tasks here. So let's just go ahead and add a task here. We can say send this video to my editor <laughs> and then we hit add task and then we can add a title as well. We probably should have done that first <laughs> and that's really nice. And this would end up syncing with your CalDAV. So your remote uh, server, if you chose to have one, but I, I think this is a good, uh, a good direction for some of the native uh, elementary apps that they, they have going on. Yeah. I like it. Good job guys. So uh, here's, this is code. Uh, this is a, a cool thing. I'm not sure if this is an entirely uh, original creation of the elementary team or if this is something that they forked, um, but I, I really like this little code app. I know uh, I have a couple of friends who, have, who swear by this app, um, I, you, but this is an example of one of the apps that actually doesn't respect the global, um, the, the global dark mode. And uh, this is a peculiar one to not respect the global dark mode, in my opinion, because if there's one place that I think uh, dark mode is an absolute must, uh, it's it's coding apps. Uh, I personally use uh, the open source fork of VS Code, and uh, by golly gosh, you know, if if I was using a light mode in that, I I, I don't think I'd be half as productive. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I I like this code app though. The code is is nice. Uh, I'm I'm wondering if this is something that they actually use in there um, to to create elementary. I, I would imagine at least somebody does because uh, this is this is just super cool. All right, and this is one of the like the, the really cool features that I just super uh, dig, and I I wish that uh, GNOME would implement something like this natively into um, GNOME. Uh, basically, if you right-click on the title bar, 
um, you can um, you can take a screenshot. Like that's super cool, and it only takes a screenshot of that window. Uh, that's like super nifty. I really like this. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I love uh, Firefox so much is because, and it's one of the reasons, even though Firefox pissed me off, it's one of the reasons I've gone back to Firefox is because I take screenshots of web pages all the time to put them in my videos. And, um, you know, it's a lot harder to take a screenshot of, a, of an entire web page uh, in Chrome or in Brave or, you know, Chrome-based browsers. So uh, Firefox is cool that they have this feature, and I think it would be so sick if GNOME implemented something like this. Okay, so this is a really cool feature too. Uh, you can middle click on any of these icons up here uh, to do different things. Uh, so you can middle click on the sound icon here to mute it. Uh, you can middle click on the power icon to, to pop up the power, uh, like restart and shut down buttons. And you can click on, and you can middle click on the uh, notifications button to uh, to do, go into do not disturb mode. And that's just a little uh, quality of life feature that I really like. But uh, yeah, I think that's everything that I actually wanted to cover with Elementary OS. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. If if you use Elementary OS, let me know what you think of it down below. If you don't use Elementary OS, what do you think of uh, Elementary OS 6.0? Hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'm very excited to hear what you guys had to say about uh, this new elementary release. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you believe in the work that I'm doing here and you want to help support this show, you can head over to Patreon or maybe become a YouTube member. Both of those are linked in the description. I want to say thank you to my patrons, without whom I would not be able to do this. They are the coolest group of folks, and it's really awesome to have you guys around. Uh, so thank you. That's going to do it for this video. If you want to uh, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'm not going to shame you if you don't. But anyway, my name is Gardner, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day. Boop.